Here I'm the uh, Commissioner of Health for the City of Milwaukee, and I want to thank you all for joining us at our annual Back to School Health Fair. Over the last 12 years, the Health Department has worked with community partners to host the largest health fair in uh, Milwaukee. Today's event, along with last Friday's event at South Division, we expect to serve nearly 5,000 attendees with free immunizations, health screenings, lead testing, health care, uh, uh, and, and safety information. And we're already at 1,000 or so uh, people uh, this morning. We also have representatives here today from daycares, from Head Start programs, from charter schools, from free and reduced lunch programs, and so many other community services. This is truly a one-stop shopping event. We have staff that are available to assist all of these individuals who, who need insurance uh, themselves or, or for their children. And then at the end of all of that, we're giving away free backpacks. And these backpacks are filled with school supplies uh, for the children who are up to date on their immunizations or who get up to date today on their immunization. So as a result, when kids visit our health fair, they're going to get a healthier start to school year. And that is what helps Milwaukee. And I'm proud to announce that this year's event has gotten even bigger, bigger and better. And through the generosity of many of our sponsors who are, who are standing behind me, and they include United Healthcare, BMO Harris Bank, uh, with sponsorship support from Children's Community Health Plan, Molino Healthcare, United Way of Greater Milwaukee, and the Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. Those are great partnerships, and they underscore the need for community collaboration to meet the, the immense needs of our community. And I want to thank these sp sponsors for supporting our community and, and, uh, and, and giving our children a healthy start. So these health fairs are a great opportunity for parents and, and many of their children's health needs to, to get addressed and to address them early so that they don't manifest themselves into something grave and where they can have a worse health outcomes. So it's my hope that, as every year, that parents, guardians, and others take advantage of this healthy uh, start to the school year and, and, and come out. There's still time for them to come out uh, even today as we'll be here through the afternoon. And now I, I want to introduce our, our mayor, Mayor Tom Barrett, and I want to thank him uh, publicly for his leadership and commitment, particularly to the, the issue of immunization, to make certain that children are safe, that they are strong and healthy and they're ready to learn. So, Mayor Baker. Thank you very much, Commissioner Baker, and I want to thank all of our sponsors as well this morning. Eight years ago when I became mayor, Commissioner Baker and I uh, met in my office and we looked at the immunization rates for students at the Milwaukee Public Schools. And what we saw was that the immunization rates for kids who were attending MPS, Milwaukee Public Schools, the largest school system in the state, lagged far behind the state numbers. Um, and it was at that meeting that we made the decision that we were going to make an all-out effort to raise the level of students attending the Milwaukee Public Schools to receive their immunizations. We felt because we want these kids to be in school that it was imperative that students not miss school as a result of missing their shots. And so what we have seen over the last eight years is we've seen a constant progression in the number of students who have received these immunizations. That's just one of the things that we're concerned about here today. But this is our 12th annual Back to School Health Fair, and it's an important part of the school, school readiness for children across the city. It, it's always mixed emotions when I have this day because the sun is shining, it's still summertime, but we know that it's just a week or two before our students go back to school, and we want them to be ready. We want them to be ready academically, but we want them to be ready in the health context as well. I'm very grateful to our sponsors as well, from United Healthcare to BMO, Harris Bank, Children's Community Health Plan, Molina Healthcare, United Way of Greater Milwaukee, proud partner of Children's Hospital Wisconsin. They have all stepped forward with their support, and without them, we couldn't put this, put this amazing event on for our school children. There are more than 45 organizations here today to help Milwaukee children and their families. From health screenings, lead testing, and immunizations, to providing backpacks and school supplies, our partners are here to get the school year off to the right start for thousands of Milwaukee children. As Commissioner Baker said, we may reach 5,000 kids between this event and the event that we had last week at South Division on the South Side. Like many communities across our country, families in Milwaukee face challenges when it comes to affordable, accessible health care. We can't let those challenges come in the way of learning and success in school. 
What we are doing here today is important, but we must keep the attention on health and wellness throughout the school year for everyone in our community, from infants to seniors. I encourage families to stay on top of immunization schedules and well child visits. Have your child tested for lead levels and provide health family healthy family meals and plenty of opportunity for movement and play. For growing families, it's important to get proper prenatal care. But this is a day when we see the moms, particularly the grandmas, the aunts, coming in with their kids, getting them ready for school. And I want to thank every parent, every guardian who's bringing their children or the kids that they care for to these health fairs. Because they are demonstrating that they care enough about the health and the education of their children that they're willing on a gorgeous, gorgeous Friday morning to stand in line uh, to get the services that they need. But it's our hope that by doing this, everybody benefits. The entire community benefits when you've got mothers, fathers, aunts, grandmas who care enough about their kids. And we want all of our kids, every single child in this community, to be ready for school when it starts. Thank you very much. So, uh, if, there are, if there are any questions from our media outlets, we'll take those at this time. Kevin, um, when um, the parents are coming in, like you, have, you have people who are caregivers for infants, you have pregnant women, are they getting an opportunity to also get a booster for whooping cough so that they protect their they have this children? Uh, yes, they are. That's very important that um, our immunization uh, staff assess where people are, whether they're up to date, whether they're eligible for a booster, and then we can administer that here today. Um, this is truly one stop, and, and it, it underscores the importance of coming, bringing your immunization records if you have them, if you don't have them, we can look up through the Wisconsin Immunization Registry and make certain that that very thing happens. It's so critical that those boosters are administered if they're, uh, if they're eligible for that booster. The questions. With the, speaking about pertussis, uh, there was a recent report that came out that said Wisconsin is the number one. Uh, this is where you see the most cases out of any state in the country. Can you talk a little bit about that, the importance of, of being proactive? Well, we, we certainly are aware that Wisconsin has been uh, significantly impacted by uh, pertussis or whooping cough and that we're seeing this trend nationally. This is something that is cyclical, it comes in waves, and that it underscores the importance of having all of these partners here, underscores the importance of the investment by the city of Milwaukee into making certain that we can get uh, uh, you know, big access to our, our community, and underscores our uh, immunization initiative. Let me be clear and say that parents need to understand that immunizations do work, and there are consequences when you forego them, and we need to educate our community about taking advantage of access to immunizations. And, and much of what we're seeing nationally is because we're seeing that many are, be, are, are haven't seen diseases that are uh, vaccine preventable and they're foregoing vaccines. And that combination, it can be daily, deadly, and we hope that the state of Wisconsin can pull back this immunization, uh, this through immunization, this outbreak in, uh, in this epidemic and, and moving problem. Have you seen, but one of the things we've seen is that the state that's second, we're first in the number of uh, the, the pertussis whooping cough rate uh, in the nation and the state of Washington is second. The state there has moved. The state of Washington has moved, I think, and declared a state of emergency. Um, we need the state of Wisconsin, obviously, to be very engaged with us. What we're trying to do here today is proactive. We are, we're trying to bring in uh, the, the people who, who are exposed to it because it's pregnant women, it's infants, it's children who are the ones that are most susceptible. So for them to get it, for older students and older kids to get, uh, and even adults, to get the booster shots, um, that's important as well. But, but we're committed here in the city of Milwaukee. We, we know it's an issue, and that's why we're acting. Mayor Barrett, are you going to ask that the state declare... Uh, well, I'm going to consult with, with Commissioner Baker, and we certainly are going to be having more contact with them. And if that's what's necessary, that's what we will do. And what would that mean exactly? What would that allow you to do? Well, I, I, historically, when there is a state of emergency that's declared for a public health issue, it invokes, uh, one, some federal support, additional federal support. It may invoke uh, additional actions by uh, the state uh, Department of Health Services. It could mean uh, a, a fiscal change in policy. It could be uh, a, a, a programmatic change. But when one declares a state of emergency, it gives the governor and the secretary some uh, executive powers to move resources, to move people, to address this public health threat. 
Uh, we're, as Mayor Barrett said, we're hopeful that the state of Wisconsin is having those discussions, but we'll be in discussion with them and, and we will recommend uh, uh, appropriately. But it does unlock additional resources at the federal level and it gives the uh, state the ability to, to uh, through executive order or executive powers, to programmatically uh, address this issue. We hope that that discussion is happening as we speak. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I always like to give a mascot. High five. Wonderful job. You have been better. Again, thank you. Thank you.